Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Act of Love podcast. My name is Alyssa, and I am joined with my mom, Heidi, and Lorraine. We're here with birth mom, Danielle, who is kind enough to share with us her story about how she got here and what led her to choose adoption. Yeah. Welcome, Danielle. Thank and you, Lorraine. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, welcome, here. Oh, yeah. welcome yeah, back, exactly. Lorraine. Happy to be yes. here. Yes. So, yes. That's good. Yeah. So, okay, Danielle, you get to walk us along your journey, um, starting from maybe when you found out you were pregnant and then proceeding. <laughs> okay. I think we may, maybe we need to go back just a tad. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Backstory. Let's do the yeah. backstory for just a second. and then For I, sure. And then you can pick up where we met. Okay. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. I was driving to work one day and... I can't, I don't remember the month, but I was coming off the highway, off the freeway, and I was coming under, under the freeway. And it was, you know, it's eight lanes of traffic. So the bridge is big. And as I was coming off the freeway to head east on the main highway, just the, it was like a flash. It was like a flash of lightning. <laughs> a car came off the opposite off ramp where I was just about to pass and was airborne. Oh and my it, goodness. And I slammed on my brakes. The car missed me. The car hit um one of the big metal signs telling you what directions to go. Proceeded to hit the three cars stopped at the red light to go um the other direction. Flipped over a couple oh of times. Goodness. I sat there completely stopped in the middle of the road thinking, oh my gosh, I just, I could have been hit by this car. Yeah. And it just all kind of in a flash, all this happened and people were getting out of their cars, but now they're on the other side of the highway. And I'm like, wow, I am alive, but I was shaken up. And I, my heart was racing, and I slowly started to go to get out of, I was in a major intersection, and so I slowly started to go to get out of traffic, and I pulled over in a parking lot, just kind of took a deep breath for a long time. And um, I was on my way to the office, and I just thought, oh, you need to just take a break. Don't go to the office yet. And I sat there in the parking lot, did a few things, made a couple of phone calls, and when my heart and mind had calmed down, I proceeded forward and went to work and went, what a crazy morning. Yeah. Um, several several weeks went by since the time I saw this flash of a car and this accident happened before me, but I didn't stick around to, I mean, sirens almost happened immediately when the crash happened and people were jumping out of their cars to check on the people that had flipped over and, um, you know, it's just one of those things you don't ever forget because you watch this and it's like slow motion, but it happened quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe it was two or three months later, um, the agency received an application um, for a woman who wanted and who was considering her adoption options and wanted to talk to us and meet about it. And I made contact and made an appointment to meet with this woman. And Danielle, I'm going to let you pick it up for just a second <laughs> from there. How about that? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh -huh. so I wrote a letter. Mm -hmm. um, I found out I was pregnant. Um, that day I was taken to the hospital. And I just remember thinking like, my life is over. Yeah. My life is over. Yeah. You know, and the doctor came in and he said, I've got good news and bad news. And I was like, okay. And I'm handcuffed to 
And so, okay, so point. let's go back. <laughs> you were driving the vehicle that flipped. Ah, uh, yes. No, oh, no, I wasn't driving. Okay, she passenger was in the vehicle. You were the passenger. Okay, yes. In that vehicle that you witnessed. Yes. But so right, right, right. We so she's went. the passenger in that car that went. Yeah. Yeah. Right in front of her. Yes. And so wow. I fast forward three months later. Yeah. Um, okay. She receives a letter from me. Okay. Basically frantic, like, you know, I'm incarcerated. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. All I know is that I'm in a lot of trouble. Okay. And I'm going to be away for a long time. Okay. Right. And I was told this day in the hospital, you know, um, the good news is you're pregnant. Uh, <laughs> that was your good news? The bad news is you have a broken clavicle and there's nothing we can do about that oh, except yeah. for give you yeah. an arm sling. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So she walked I, away from this car airborne. Oh, my God. I, not it's, a scrap. No. I think it flipped twice. And did she, flip twice. And then we landed in the back of a pickup truck. Oh, my. God. And I just remember looking over and seeing the people in the pickup truck looking up at me. And their dogs are in the back seat, too. Yeah. And it was just <laughs> crazy. The craziest situation you could ever imagine. And so I am incarcerated and I'm like, okay, I've got to do something. Mm -hmm. And so I write this letter to Active Love. I got in the phone book and okay. just saw the phone the book. Phone book. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And looked up adoption mm -hmm. and saw Active Love and I just wrote them a letter. Okay. And so fast forward two, three months yep. and they say, Danielle, you have a visit. Oh. And my family was not speaking to me. Okay. They were embarrassed because I it, this was covered on the news. Yeah. Um, news reporters were going to my parents' homes no. trying to get interviews. Just, um, just really embarrassed my entire family yeah. and just caused a lot of havoc. Yeah. Um, so they're like, you have a visit. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I think my family's here. Yeah. And so I go into the visiting area and I see Lorraine. <laughs> And I'll never forget. She's your she family this, now. Yes. Right? And so I'll never forget. She had this dress on, this like yellow dress with flowers. And she had these red rimmed glasses <laughs> and a short bob, real short hair. And I was like, I have no idea who this is. <laughs> I do not know her. And she was like waving at me and like, hi, you know, have a seat. And I was just like, who or okay. who is this you lady? Know. She's like, oh, my name's Lorraine and I'm from Active Love Adoption Agency. And I was like, um, okay. And let me remind you, we're standing pets. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah six six us. In, in between us, right. you know, right. it's just a small window, yeah. you know. Right. And I'm just like, I just, just sighed. A, like took a breath of relief you yeah. know yeah and so I sat down the conversation was really just very organic we just we just talked yeah you know as uh, she asked me questions just it was like meeting with a friend yeah you know and she says you don't you don't belong here what are you doing here mm -hmm. and so I told her you know what had happened and she said I saw that. Oh yes. my gosh! You were wearing some black boots <laughs> and a black vest. I mean, I just knew, and it had a fur like, on it. And I was like, "Yeah." She's she like, almost hit me. Oh, I was two <laughs> cars behind the car you landed in. Wow. Yeah. And every time I tell this story, I get goosebumps yeah, like, from head to toe right. because yeah, it was it was in that moment, yeah. that very moment, right then and there, that I knew yeah. that I was doing the right yeah. thing. Yes. And so now I just got the chills. Yeah. That's it was so just crazy. a God moment. Yeah, it is. God totally. Moment. Yeah. And so, you know, the conversation went on. I felt really good about things. I was like, yes, I'm going to do this. And the whole time I was just like certain that I was going to do this because you can't lie to yourself. Yeah. That's the one person you can't lie to. Yes. And I knew deep down that I wasn't ready to let go of the life that I was leading. Yeah. I wasn't ready. Okay. And you so thought you were in jail. I was up. I was in jail, yeah. but I had been in that place before. Oh, you had. Okay. Several times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I would get out and I would do the same things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I just had no faith in myself. I had no real desire um to do anything different i just was existing okay and so 
the whole time, like I, I got the profiles from Lorraine and I was looking at them and I was like imagining my baby just somewhere with these some of these people, you know, mm-hmm. some of them I looked at and I was like, no, they're not the one, yes. you know, yeah, you know. and you just know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because I picked a family. I wanted a family that had that looked like what my baby was going to look yeah. like. I yeah. wanted them to be with people that look like them. Yeah. You know, that was my one thing is I wanted their culture to be celebrated. Yes. Yeah. And so I would just look at people and I was like, nope, that's not Okay, what's mind. your culture? I'm going to... Um, African-American okay. Pacific Islander. Okay. okay. Um, and so I was just... It's crazy because I picked this family. They had um, a daughter of their own that they had a birth daughter. Mm-hmm. And then they had a set of twins that okay. were African-American. Okay. And I was like, okay, I I like these people. I met them even. Yeah. I spoke with them on the phone. Okay. Like I chose them. Yeah. And I was picturing my baby with them. And mm-hmm. it was uh, the plan. Yeah. And so time went on. The months went by. Um, I was getting very close to giving birth Uh and this was maybe like around Halloween time that this happened, that they contacted Lorraine and said that it was not the right time for them to grow their family. Um, And I'm due in two weeks. Oh no, I'm sorry. So I was like, oh. So I'm pulled the rug out from under. Yes. What, what I'm back to square one. Yeah. And so I had these profiles still and I had to go back through the profiles and I was like, you know, Mm -hmm. I just had this sick feeling like. They weren't in those profiles. Yeah. And so I started, you know, like just reading through them and giving the people that I had not chosen to begin with a chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I stumbled upon Jared and Jessica. Okay. And. I saw, you know, once I opened it up, because on the front, it was just like a picture of them. Yeah. Caucasian. And yeah, parent. <laughs> and so I open it up and they have four other African-American children. Oh, okay. And I would have never known this and, you know, because yeah. I had just went off my gut feeling. Yeah. And just you just passed that aside. I, yeah. Open it. And but today I am so eternally grateful. Yeah. For those two people. Yeah. Um. Sorry. No, you're good. They're so amazing. They are amazing. Yeah. And they have accepted me and even at my lowest, never judged. And I just feel so like grateful that that happened. Yeah. And I was able to go back and give them a second look well, because I would have not had it any other it, way. It sounds like God in your beans again. Yes. Then. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Having that other thought. Fu- family back absolutely out. lorraine and i were just talking about how no matter what yeah god has always been working yes. in my life yeah and yeah. so yes i got to meet jared and jessica literally like i was released from jail 72 hours before olivia was born oh my goodness wow i i left the jail in That's a lot paper clothes because the clothes i came in did Ooh. not fit okay. my shoes didn't even fit my feet and they don't give you anything. You just wearing paper clothes yeah. in, in the prison. Um, so you wear like their clothes while okay. you're there. But then they like put me in this room with my bag of belongings. And I mean, I'm out to here. You're like nothing. I was so big. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my, what am I going to do? Like, <laughs> I hadn't, I had you don't nothing. have family. I, I do have family. Okay. It was just a strained relationship yeah, you know it's hard s- s- like so much damage had been done yeah um so yeah lorraine picked me up <laughs> and was just my knight in shining armor like just was like yeah let's go get you some clothes and get you set up and i was just like a culture shocked because i was like okay um you know i've been incarcerated before <laughs> I've been incarcerated while pregnant before. Yeah. I had never had this experience before okay. of adoption. And I was nervous to meet Jared and Jessica. And I just had so many. I was like, God, they're, I mean, I was embarrassed. I felt yeah. so much shame just yeah. for the position that I was in. Yeah. And it was like, it was like 
none of that even mattered. Yeah. Like none of that even mattered to them. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know, just, I just felt loved. Yeah. You know, which you should by strangers. Yes. And so it was just an incredible experience and it has been every day since. Yeah. Um, Jared and Jessica send me flowers on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. They, every Christmas I get an ornament with her picture on it and an update, you know, what she likes, what she's into, Uh um, you know, her milestones. And it's just, I couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah. And I will, for the rest of my life, like work to support women who are considering adoption because it has been such a blessing, not even once, but twice yeah. in my life. So I have yeah. another child as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I got pregnant shortly after um, Olivia was born. Okay. And I placed him as well. You know, I mm-hmm. called Lorraine and was like, I'm in this situation. Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, let's here we go. Out. Let's figure it out. Yeah. And To say Lorraine is an angel is not saying enough. It's just not saying enough. Yeah. And Active Love Adoption Agency is just, I just owe them so much because it's the one thing out of my whole life, the one thing I know that I've done right. You know, Uh it is. It's the one thing I know that I've done right. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the, the the second adoption, did the, the child go to the same family, different family? So that was sort of the plan when when it all came together. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, after a couple of months, Jessica and I spoke and there was just, it just wasn't the right time. Yeah, for them. For them. Yeah. And so I was back, you know, Going looking at profiles and trying to pick the right people yeah. and I didn't know I was having a boy. Um, I didn't, I didn't really know. I hadn't been to the doctor or anything. Um, and around that time I had a bad accident. Um, and I wound up in a wheelchair. Huh? So pregnant in a wheelchair, Gosh. can't walk, can't even I mean, my arm was messed up. My leg was messed up. I had broken ribs, so I couldn't. Is it another car accident? Um, No, okay. I, I fell. Oh, you from fell? From a third story, yes. Holy crap. Yeah. So crushed my heel. <laughs> crushed my heel. <laughs> face is just like, oh, yeah. I guess if you know it the was, story. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, all you can say is poor decisions made by some of the people she was associating with caused this extreme goodness it was, tra- it was traumatic and yeah just another traumatic event that she and I were searching for light at the end of the tunnel mhm my gosh yeah. and we were pregnant at the time you yes. fell mhm seriously oh yeah so she was pregnant when she had the car accident yes and we made, made it through that yeah she was pregnant when she fell out of the baby story window yeah maybe definitely meant to be here mm-hmm. and both babies hundred percent yeah. yeah and that that injury really altered like and has affected my life every day since yeah you know still was, today yeah still today yeah every day um i was lucky that i made it through that and that my baby survived yes um, yeah, so I spent my entire pregnancy, I was homeless at the time, um, in a wheelchair, couldn't do anything for myself, couldn't even How, brush what my does, own hair. What does that even look like, though? I mean, homeless in um, a wheelchair. So, I mean, how do you even get through that? <laughs> very carefully. Yeah. The, I mean, I don't know how I made it. Yeah. Um, the fall was bad. The aftermath was worse. Yeah. The, like, living day to day, like sitting in this wheelchair looking at the store wanting to go get myself something to eat and I couldn't yeah I couldn't get there pregnant and pregnant and had nobody around me that I could trust no you know not even with five dollars yeah like I would say you know I just want I my pregnancy craving was a Bahama mama from Maverick with chili and cheese on it I have That's never all I heard of a Bahama Mama. It's just a hot dog. Oh, it's, it's a hot dog. Yeah. Okay. Just a chili and cheese hot dog. The, like, I lived for it. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I would be like, can you, 
will you go get me a hot dog from the Maverick? And I would never see him again. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was it was a horrible situation that I was in. Yeah. And it's taken a long time to come to come back from that. Yeah. I can only imagine. Um, but I have. Um, I finally I don't I don't know what switched, Mm -hmm. but I just decided that I didn't want to live like that anymore. So it took you. It drove you to the streets and having to place another child, and that was your yeah. And it that was, was the point where you're like, okay, I'm that wasn't this. even the point. Oh, I went really? through more after that, okay. um, you know. And then the <laughs> the emotion and stuff that comes with like placing a baby, yeah. And um, you know, the first time I was like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. It's I I know I'm doing this, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's the right thing to do. Yeah. It's it feels right. Yeah. Um, and then it happens. And it's hard. Yeah. It's go get some tissues. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, I remember with Olivia, every day after she was born, yeah. they would bring her to see me because they couldn't take her out of the state until a judge had yeah. signed. Yeah. You know, given yeah. her custody. Contact. Yeah. So so every day I was getting to see her and hold her and um, just look at her and love her. Yeah. And then one day they got on a plane and they left with her. Yeah. And oh my God, I felt like my heart had been yeah. ripped out of my chest. Like, I, that was your point. You knew that you weren't going to see her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and they were great to, they made me this book of just all the baby stages you know tons and tons of pictures yeah all the time and and i mean she was on her first vacation at a month old yeah you know on yeah. a beach in hawaii and oh I my like, goodness i it it provided a lot of peace yeah they they were really great about that yeah you know and i was just like you did the right thing yeah it still doesn't change how much That's it hurts pain. yeah it never changes how much it hurts. Yeah. Um, with with my second Asher, um, I kind of knew what to expect. Yeah. But the difference between the two situations was with Asher, I wanted so badly to keep him. No, no. I just didn't even know where to start to clean my life up. Yeah. Like, just I had made such a mess mm-hmm. that... It was just not possible yeah. or right. Yeah. You know, because of the situation you were in, right. you would still be in having him. Yeah. And I just think back over what I've been through since giving birth to the two of them. Mm-hmm. And if I would have kept them, what I would have drugged them through. Yeah. And that's what, that's what really like gives me peace mm-hmm. is knowing, just knowing that I did the right thing. Yeah. Because they're in and a, they're place. safe and they're loved and they're so smart. I just got to see them both. Oh, um, Olivia is going to be ten in November. Oh, oh my god! Um, Asher just turned eight, okay. and they are just the cutest, funniest, <laughs> most two unique, uniquely different individuals. Yeah, and I just. Like I got to see them both mm-hmm. at the same time, that, and they that's know, what I was going to. And ask. they know that's each other. Okay. They know oh, that's that's really, awesome. you know. Yeah, that's so. Awesome. How I couldn't have asked for anything better. Yeah. I'm just going to interject. When she was looking for the family for Asher, mm-hmm. that was one of something that we counseled about in so much detail is finding a family that would communicate with Jessica and Jared mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for the lifetime of these children yeah. that are half siblings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was Danielle's one. Of, I mean, she was looking at all families, but that prerequisite of saying, I want these families, no matter what, yeah. to be connected and bonded to each other. So right out of the starting gate, Jessica and Jared were aware of Asher's birth, aware of this family, and information was shared between those two families pretty quickly after placement happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so Jessica and Jared and Asher's parents mm-hmm. are, they communicate with each other mm-hmm. on a regular basis. So ultimately when she's talking about seeing the kids, 
Uh, that's something that's been going the on. The kids and the big parents big. and the grandma, uh-huh. I mean, they all landed in Salt Lake and uh-huh. came yeah. here to solely visit. for the purpose oh, that's amazing. for those children to connect. Uh-huh. And So was that the first time they had met? No, no. They, oh, they've, oh, since no. they okay. were little. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Since they, they, were, they have, they've been connected with each other since yeah. the babies were little and now they're grown, you know, they're children. Yeah. They've been connected with Danielle. Yeah. And neither one of those families have lost that connection, yeah. of course. And they're, it's like going to a family reunion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's so yeah. An extended. They, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. go to these great. family reunions and mm-hmm. Jessica and Jared have other children mm-hmm. and, they take those children yeah. to family reunions in Alabama, Louisiana, all yep, over the place. All over. To yeah. make sure that the other children that they've adopted mm-hmm. are also bonded and connected yes. to their birth to their yeah. birth family. Yeah. yeah. And they, they take them, they get invited to family reunions all over the country. And they take them. And they pick up the children and off they go to the family reunion. See, and mm-hmm. I, I think that that's the modern family now. It right. is the part of family. True adoption. Sure. Yes. 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 Yeah. Everyone's one unit. So it doesn't matter. Yep. It's just extending your family. We right? were just talking about that yes. in the parking lot. Yeah. Like your family's grown tenfold. Yeah. And of course, yeah. Danielle has, through all her work and effort and changes, you know, she and her own family um, have moved through, you know, they they were distant for a bit mm-hmm. and have totally been able to iron out Come some back of those around. differences. Yeah. Yeah. So you have them. Most of them, yeah. Yeah. She yeah. still she still has Four things she like to change and do. Yeah, absolutely. There's always room for growth and improvement, mm-hmm. you know. Um but I like to just think that I have, you know, the ones that the ones that are worth it are the ones that are there. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah. So um I just, yeah, I, I focus on what I have and yeah. not what I don't, what I don't yeah. have, yeah. you know. And, like, I just, um, I really want to talk about, you know, since then, um, it's it's something that I'm proud of, mm-hmm. you know, that I placed two children yeah. for adoption. And, um, like, my life has changed dramatically since yeah. since all of that. It's just been... It's been a ride. Yes. It's been a ride. Yeah. I have four years clean. Awesome. Um, Good for you. You know, I work in recovery. I help others now do the same thing. Yeah. And I couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah. You know, I just, my life is full today. Yeah. And um, like my my adoption story, our story is just like, it's so important, mm-hmm. you know, that I share it. Yes. Because... I, to the women out there who are thinking about it, um, that want to, I just say do it. Yeah, just do it. And you, the it, the beautiful thing about it is you can do it your way. Yeah, you know i I was able to find people who are willing to have open adoption yeah. and have that relationship. You know, um, I never wanted. My goal was I wanted those children to grow up knowing that. I did it because I love them and um, I just wanted to be a part of their life, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, that was like really super important to me. Yeah. And so I'm just blessed beyond blessed for, for the whole experience, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and I think that the open adoptions like yours tend to work better for the children and everyone involved. Right. Personally. And, you know, I've seen my mom's adopted. Oh. And so my mom had incredible, my grandparents were incredible people, Mm -hmm. you know, and my mom's had such a good experience. We've been able to connect her with her birth mom. Okay. And um, there's just so much power in there, you know, and um, I think maybe... Back back then, it was just it was different. It was cl- always closed. It, well, well, and I was going to say because with my with her, hers was closed. So when we adopted her, it was a closed adoption. Yeah, and I just wanted to remove that question, like for them, that why? Yeah, you know, because yeah. my mom always wondered why. Yeah, mm-hmm. she wanted to know, you know. Yeah, and I just wanted to remove that question. I just wanted them to for know it children. was because yeah. they're loved. Yeah, and 
it was because I I knew deep down that I was not ready to be their mom. Yeah. The way I should have been. Yeah. You couldn't provide for them at the right. Brain I brain. you when were I met never Lorraine, take, yeah. I had nothing. Yeah. I had nothing. Literally. Literally. You walked out with no shoes and paper, paper clothes. Yeah. yeah. Come a long way. Yeah. She's done the work. Yeah. <laughs> I supported her through the journey she's been on. Yeah. And we've remained in contact. She's done the work. Yeah. And when when she's failed at the work, she's picked up her bootstraps and said, I'm going to fix this. And she's done the work. Yeah. And then I applaud her yeah. for something that has not been easy. Yeah. Lacing a baby for adoption is not easy. Lacing two babies for adoption is not easy. No. And the journey she's been on trying to pull her life together is beyond amazing. Yeah. And it's there's so much hope. Yes. There's just so much hope for her. And she is the perfect example of the hope that's out there for women everywhere. Yeah. You know, they find themselves in a hard spot in domestic violence or in drug-related issues or in car accidents mm -hmm. or who knows. Yeah. Um, and we work with so many women from so many, diver such diversity. Yeah. But what Danielle's sitting here doing is saying, my gosh, there's hope in mm -hmm. it all. Yeah. Yeah. I found hope in adoption. I found hope in myself. I found integrity in myself. I found, and the families, you know, had given her, you know, all that. Yeah. Without judgment. Yeah. You know, and they just have hope for everything that she's doing and her goals and every place that she's going. And because of the trajectory that she's chosen, mm -hmm. right? She's chosen to better herself. Yeah. She's chosen to do what she's doing um, because these relationships are super important yeah. to her. Yeah. And that's what she wants is, and that's the only thing that's important to any of us. Yeah. Right. Right. Is right. our right. relationships. Just, mm -hmm. And they're so important to her that she chose to let go of tight or bad relationships that, that prohibit her, prohibited her heart and mind um, from moving forward. Mm -hmm. And she really had to make some tough choices um, to let some of the light and the good in. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's true. I mean, it, it does show from the get-go not having anything and that there is hope in all situations, even when you feel like there's not. Yeah. Looking back, you can see where God was in your life. Directing you at times. Like he never left, right? Mm hmm Yep. He was always still a part of that. Yep. We even talked to Mose and when she was in jail and it's like there was light there. There were people there. Yeah. That continued to provide support in the home. Support and light. And yeah. Well, you're amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Very amazing. I mean, that's a hard road to come back out of. So, and I love because whenever I feel like I get knocked down, I'm like, all I can do is get back up and keep going. Right. Yeah. And you, Absolutely. yes, sure. Instead, did. Of, instead of living in that moment, you learn to get back up and just keep walking. Yeah. And it's right. You know, as Daniel said, even at the beginning, you know, this journey's ongoing. Yeah. Right. It is. And yeah. she, in turn, made a comment while we were driving down here about paying it forward. And it's just, it's just so amazing to hear her talk about not just one time paying it forward yeah. or two times paying it forward or three times paying it forward. Her goal in life is to continually keep paying as it forward. often as possible, keep paying it forward. Hence the type of work that she's doing now, yes. the type of jobs that she's looking for is my life wouldn't have ever changed without soup, certain people intervening, intervening and helping me. Yeah. And um, that's my responsibility now. Yeah. And she's, she just takes every opportunity she can yeah. to build somebody else up, to help them have a second chance because she was given yeah. second chances and third chances. Mm -hmm. And people change. Yeah. 
they it's do. the greatest thing about this. Yeah, life, right? and yeah. Change. can change. It's the beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah, right. And we'll where she was, she knew that's not her. Yeah, she knew deep down this. And she used to tell me when we first met ten years ago, "This is not how I was raised. Yeah, um, this is not what I was taught." So she had both some background, and she had something else to relate to and focus on as she's continued this journey. Yeah. I mean, and she's the best person I know of paying it forward. It's just like, holy cow, you did that. You did that. I'm just like overly impressed. Yeah. And I think that because of what you've gone through, you have more empathy towards people. Mm Mm-hmm. Because you you know what it you know like what it's be like you've been there yeah. yeah yeah and you want to help raise them up and that's amazing because there's not a lot of people around here anymore that are like that so the paying it forward and the help building people up so that's and these children these children are all going to grow up together right? yeah mm-hmm. and one day you know they're not they're going to reach out to Danielle mm-hmm. with their own children saying yeah. I want my kids to meet you, yeah. Danielle, yeah. and she can. She now has this big picture. Mm-hmm. Um, the families raising, the families who are the parents that these children belong to their families, mm-hmm. their gratitude, and that's where she gets more encouragement because they're they're so grateful. Yeah, to her exactly for the joy. Yes, they, that she gave, gave them. them. Yeah, and the hope that she gave them yes. that they. Their feedback to her, it's just full circle. Yeah. Their feedback yeah. back, back to her. Mm-hmm. These family reunions will continue. Yes. Yeah. And well, there's <laughs> there's no way not to care for a birth mom that makes you a parent. Right. So, I mean, for in my case, I've adopted four and the gratitude that I always felt. I mean, I wouldn't have any children. Right. So, and, you know, just when I got to see them recently, um, I met Asher's grandmother mm-hmm. and we met at the park, you know, and she's like this fiery little woman. And she just gave me a hug and was like, thank you for thank you for giving us mm-hmm. a grandbaby. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I wish I wish I could ever relay the gratitude I feel. Thank you mm-hmm. for just thank you. Thank you for being there. You know, um, Brian and Jake are incredible. And I just thank you for raising, you know, such a great young man. Yeah. Like my gratitude, my heart, when I look at them and I just go, I go to bed at night and I know like, yeah, I did. I did the right thing. Yeah. It was hard. Yeah. It still is hard. Like seeing them and watching them, you know, having them leave is not the, it is hard. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not the just best. Hurts. It's, yeah. It does. It's bittersweet. Yeah. Because I, I'm just grateful that they are, they're just growing to be so amazing. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. And I couldn't, I, I just, Look at the suit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm just happy. Yeah. It just it's just happy. one of those things that's like even just hard to put into words. Yeah. Like you can't, it really is. Mm-hmm. It really you can't is. Can't even describe it. Yeah. It's just that's peace. amazing. Well, yeah. that, and that's what you deserve. So thank you. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Totally. So um, I, I usually ask birth moms if knowing everything from beginning to end, would you still place? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, and the, just the entire experience, I let Jared and Jessica be in the room and, um, Brian and Jake as well. They were there for the birth and that moment, I think about that moment, yeah. you know, um, that, you guys became family. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. was, it's special. Yes. It's so special. And I would not trade it for the world. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just want to, I just want to thank you. You have been instrumental in, in my life in more ways than one. And I've just never, I've never been loved the way you love me. And I just am, I love you. 
I do. I really do. I owe a lot to you. I love you so much. <laughs> you know, you yes. just never know where act of love. Yeah. Just a simple gesture or kindness. Yeah. Simple act of love. Yeah. Can change people's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And just thank you for never judging me, you know, because I've been judged up and down, but I've never felt anything except for love from you and pure love. And I just am so grateful to have you. <laughs> Still, I am. I, I love you. We're bonded for life. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And it's, it's like, 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 like we can it's see not talk for months and pick right up where we left off. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's just you've been such a good friend to me. Yeah. Yep. We just pick up where we ended. It. Yeah. Yeah. Her adoption story continues. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, it's an adoption journey. It yeah. doesn't. The day that baby's placed for adoption, that's not the end no. of the journey. Exactly. That's not the end of the story. Yeah. yeah. And now it's a big adoption family. Uh-huh. And it's Danielle's story to tell. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, they let my family, you know, give my family updates. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's it's blended so well. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And that's amazing. Yeah, and I want that for other women too. Yeah. I told Lorraine, like, I want to, I want to be there, um, you know, for those women that are considering because it is scary. It's like, yeah. God, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, and you know, I remember laying in a cell thinking that, like, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, I know this is gonna hurt, but you know, the good does lessen some of that. Uh-huh. And, and like seeing seeing them grow is just like it just gives you peace when you when you become a mom you the love that you feel is like un unmatched and I would never like I would never have it any other way yeah you are so always, glad yeah that's just how it was supposed to happen it was yeah it was I just with Olivia I just knew like that day that I met Lorraine, I just knew. I was like, yep, I'm on the right path. Yeah. I can't explain the feeling I had. I was just like, yep, this is this is what I'm doing. Let's do this. Yeah, that you would you know? she would go to the jail. <laughs> yeah. Come vi- and visit. And her. she would come all the time yeah. to visit me just to yep. you know. Yeah. And yeah, I was like, yeah, this is it. Yeah. This is it. And I just want that experience for anyone who finds himself at that crossroad. That's amazing. So then you want yeah. to be a spokesperson. Absolutely. You'd be a great advocate for yeah. women who are just yes. even questioning it or just thinking yeah. about it. That's yeah. in the works. Yeah. Sure is in the works. Is it, it is. It right. is in the works. It is. Oh, that's good. Her advocacy will continue to grow. Yeah. And I mean, not only was she pregnant in jail, but it's a, I feel like it's a in body. You know, she was in her own prison. Yeah. She was literally in jail, but her body and herself, she was in her own prison. Yeah. Her spirit. And pregnant and just, debi- you know, in devastation. Yeah. And sometimes that's where, you know, when you're so down and in the worst place you feel you can be. Yeah. You know, when just that little twinkling of light and hope. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I think that's where it started. Yeah. The day I showed up with red rim glasses. Mm-hmm. And, they, and the bright, and the bright. But, you know, just that inkling of the imprisonment that she felt internally. Yeah. Was just that a little piece of hope that she needed yeah. in her life. Not just adoption, but yeah. she needed in her life. Yes, she did. Mm-hmm. To keep moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So many people and you know we all find ourselves imprisoned in now yeah. different scenarios mm-hmm. and we well, I have to figure out how to get that find hope and get out mm-hmm. yeah i think it's cool that i didn't know that you have adopted yes for this is my oldest but yeah four times nice yep yep i won't I be a mother it. without it so i'm grateful to every single birth mom and it's a huge thing for, yeah. My mom's actually the founder, Kathy Kunkel. And so, oh, yes, I'm her oldest. Oh, wow. Okay. And so there's cool. 10 of us, eight are adopted. Yes. 
And so um, I've seen your pictures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of us wouldn't be here without adoption. No. Yeah. So yeah. without people like you, we wouldn't have a lot of our family. Yep. Yeah. It's it's incredible. I love how, and that's another thing that I love about the process of adoption is that it brings people together. Yes. It's it's just an act that brings people together. Yeah. It, you know. Extends your family. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it should be. And that's kind of why we started doing this podcast, because for some reason, adoption has some stigma behind it that people think it's bad or that we're it's taking like, the babies from the birth moms. Or it's almost like a them. shameful thing yeah. to like have to or people say right. giving up your baby. Yes. Or, yeah. And when so, it really isn't. Yeah, it's not. No. It's not. And that's why we wanted to do this to get some, you know, more. Yeah, it is an act of situation. love. Oh. It is an act of love. Yeah. Oh, it totally is. You know? Yes. What you guys do is totally. Yeah. That's where the name kind of fits, even though it's improper. It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do get that a lot. So oh, it's good. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So, okay. Um, I was going to say, you know, you can always come back whenever you want. Okay. Yeah, I will. If it, you know, yeah, I was so just, nervous today. Um, yeah. I, very nervous. Oh. I, I've never done anything like this yeah. before, but You've done I'm all right. about new experiences, yes. trying new things. And you're good at it. Well, thank you. She sounds like a nanosaur. She sounds yeah. so great. You, you know, you she's a, you're articulate. You're yeah, but you're smart. Your light shines. Yes, it thank does. You. She's awesome. It does. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Well, and sometimes people have been knocked down the lowest or some of the best people in the world because they know what it what it's like. Yeah. You be you have an appreciation yeah. for yeah. life, definitely. And, yeah, good people though. So okay, anytime you call me or call her, yeah. yeah, I want to go back on that podcast because we we do co-host. So like if if Jessica doesn't come, I make her come with me. <laughs> okay, I would love to do that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and, thank you guys for having me. You're so welcome. I'm thank you. Honored to be here. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome, and I hope you're not nervous anymore. No, I'm not. I'll be good. No. I'm good now. <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it, it's a free loving space here, so you don't yeah. have to worry. No judgment, touch right. anything else here. You yeah. Know. We're right. all good. So, so. Thanks uh, for having me. Like, you're welcome. Oh, okay. She's a good one. Let us <clears throat> get out and then. Well, thank you so much, Danielle and Lorraine, for joining us. And thank you, Danielle, for sharing your amazing story. We are so grateful for you sharing all of that. Thank you. Come a long way. And we are excited to see where else you go. That's true. Thanks. We're going to do such yeah. great things. I'm happy to share. Yeah. 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 And thank you guys for joining us on the Act of Love podcast. Um, if you or anybody you know have any questions or want to learn more about adoption, you can visit our website at www.aactoflovedoptions.com.